Resuscitation and Code Teams Structure and Phases Knowing the structure and phases of a resuscitation event will maximize team organization and situational awareness. Anticipation Phase During the anticipation phase, the data provided to the hospital by the pre-hospital team is received and analyzed. Concurrently, the team is gathered, leadership is established, duties are delegated, equipment is prepared and checked, and team members position themselves in readiness for the arrival of the critically ill patient. So we got a cold coming in, and um, so right now we're doing some preparations for it, and you basically are going to be a team leader, all right, and who's going to be lead nurse? Colleen. Colleen has stepped out, and uh, so we've done a nice job of assigning roles. Yes. You're, you're doing airway. I'm doing the airway. You're going to do glide scope. And I have DL as a backup. I have my bougie as a backup. Bags okay. are ready. Suctions are ready. Yeah. So so you've done your you, you've checked all your equipment, and uh, we've got information on the patient. Here comes the ultrasound machine, and uh, all right, very good. So that's important aspects of getting ready for resuscitation is uh, preparing a room, preparing the team, uh, knowing where everybody's going to be, so that the, the the lead physician should be across from your monitors okay so you can be watching your monitors and uh, also across from your lead nurse which is going to be over here so you can communicate back and forth and give guidance and recommendations entry phase the patient accompanied by pre-hospital personnel arrives in the emergency department there is an exchange of vital signs obtained by the paramedics just prior to their arrival there is also the orderly transfer of the patient to the emergency department stretcher. The hospital resuscitation team members obtain baseline assessments of the patient's ABCs. The paramedics provide a concise history and new vital signs are obtained. All right. 50-something-year-old female was getting ready for church. Sorry. Uh, okay. All right. Tangled up. Ready to come over. Got she one, three, one, two, three. What's right. rhythm there? Uh, a systole. All right, oh, monitor just came off. That's fine. So you got her intubated? Yes. Right. Got condensation in the tube, breast sounds on both sides, EP tube in place. All right, last deputy. I just gave the last deputy about two minutes ago. Okay. All right, see more of that. Uh, she's had two and a half total. Uh, my end title still hooked up. If you don't want to change over. So she was getting ready for church and collapsed. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, see what we can find. Okay. Extricated her real quick. Okay, got it. Got in the truck to better assess her. Couldn't find anything, so we started CPR. Okay. Resuscitation phase. The team assesses the patient's ABCs, performs a primary or physiologic survey, and carries out urgently indicated resuscitative interventions. Effective, strong physician and nursing leadership are important during this phase. There should be one dominant voice and information is continuously provided or directed toward team leadership. Vital signs are documented at least every five minutes, procedures are performed, and medication administration is accomplished. The secondary, or anatomic survey, is accomplished and when the patient's condition does not improve the physiologic survey is repeated. Effective communication between the team members and leadership is an important component of this phase. Okay, so the rhythm check, little pulse. Let everybody know middle you're button, running. Middle button, bottom, middle, green, double. Yep. All right. Brief rhythm check. Looks like you're in what? V fib guys. V fib. Shocker. Uh, charge that. Charge two hundred. Charge it. I'll stop it whenever. Good goods. Maintenance phase. During this period, the major assessment and resuscitative procedures have been accomplished. Continued stabilization of the patient is performed, and intravenous lines and inserted catheters and tubes are stabilized. During this phase, the team's adrenaline rush begins to subside as the most critical interventions have been accomplished. This is a vulnerable time period for the patient. A conscious effort to maintain the team's attention during this phase is an important responsibility of the team leadership. Did 300 in the last one? Okay.
Now, notice how quiet the room is, guys. That's what a good cold is, a good resuscitation. I mean, the team is controlled. You got one liter. Um, the, everybody's feeding back information to that one liter. It's quiet in here. Three minutes is up. Family notification phase. This is not a single point in time. In fact, the notification process continues throughout the resuscitation process. The resuscitation team leader should designate at least one member to be a liaison with the family. Frequent, frank status reports and information updates are important to family members and should be carried out with sensitivity. This is accomplished whether the family is or isn't physically present in the resuscitation room. So we're talking, we're talking at least 35 minutes downtime at this point. Yeah. So how, how long was she down, do you think, total? They, they said she collapsed when they called us. Okay. So when we got, we got the call, I guess, five till, like I said, we got there probably six, six seven minutes later. Okay. My first drug was pushed at 12. We'd already had the Lucas attached and everything in the line established by then, so we've okay. been working in a couple minutes. Okay. Transfer phase. Whether to a higher level of care or down the hall to the radiology suite, the transfer of a patient is associated with risks. This phase does not necessarily start at the end of a resuscitation as steps for transport to a higher level of care can be started as soon as it is obvious that a transfer will be indicated for the patient. In fact, the potential for delays in additional critical care can occur if the transfer process is not managed efficiently. Making sure the patient is ready and prepared for transport is a critical step for the resuscitation team. Critique phase. Every resuscitation scenario is different and encounters unique problems. The patient care delivered and the team's interdependent performance should be critiqued as soon as possible after resuscitation. This allows maximal educational benefit from the process and prevents repeated inefficiencies with future patients. To varying degrees, all resuscitation teams and their members sustain emotional traumas following resuscitations and the process can be cumulative. Debriefing or defusing processes can also occur during the critique phase that allows team members to manage personal grief reactions. Here, stand still. Uh -oh. Here, stand still. No, All right, any objections? Any objections? Any questions? Any suggestions? Okay. Okay. All right, we'll call it uh, 8.42. Okay. Well run, code. Did a good job. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, um, as a team leader, I just want to see if there's any suggestions that we had, anything that we could have improved on. I think things that we did well. Um, I think we communicated very well. I do. Everyone too. knew their roles before the code came in. Um, yeah. I was very happy with the way it ran. Any suggestions for improvement? Okay. You ran it really well. Everybody knew what to do. Yeah. yeah. No screaming, no yelling. It's very calm. calm. Some people are natural at this. Right. And and he's obviously natural because you know what? That was his first code he ever ran. Really? Good job. You did really good. I know. You did. Very, and that's the whole thing. And you were calm. calm at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the key. Stay calm and everybody that's else right. stays calm. Thank you. Good job. I'll do a code with you.